Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code to add it on the Roku site. One word, Dwyer Boxing News. The same on iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I get into tonight's fights, let's talk about a fight that will likely take place in March. A fighter, Adrian Broner. There's a picture of him today, December 13th, 2014, on boxing scene. He apparently showed up to an I Can't Breathe rally held by fellow fighter Andre Berto. Now understand, Broner in the ring isn't that mobile. He spreads his feet far apart. He wants to go flat-footed because going flat-footed gives you more power. He's excellent defensively, right? But he can be smothered as Marcos Medana showed us. Well, understand, for Broner to move around the ring more, he would have to be in tip-top shape, right? It's not something he normally does. Understand, I believe... Fighters who are pretty stationary in bouts, if they try to move for 12 rounds in their next fight, they're going to spend a lot more energy than they're accustomed to. They're going to get winded. They're going to get tired. It's not their game. To counteract that, a fighter would have to literally spend training camps working on fitness. The fighter would have to stay fit between fights, especially if he's going to fight at the same weight class level that he did before, right, as opposed to gaining weight. Well, the photo of Broner on boxing scene shows that he's gained a lot of weight between fights, right? I would guess, just looking at the photo, that he has to be 20 pounds heavier than he normally is. 20 pounds is a lot when you're fighting at 140 and 147. Right. What this means is that Adrian Broner won't be that mobile in his next fight. Right. If he loses weight to come in at 140, and if he's fighting a mobile higher energy opponent who can move, right? I believe Broner is going to have problems keeping up pace-wise. He's going to have to spend part of his camp losing weight to make weight. I believe a far more likely scenario has Broner gaining weight because I don't think he can make 140 comfortably. Look at his arms in the photo, right? Muscle, right? At a certain point, you can't keep the weight off as you age if you're a guy who likes to hit the buffet table, right? Trust me, I know. Clearly, Adrian Broner knows it too. So I question whether Broner's even viable at 140. I don't think we're going to see a Terrence Crawford, Adrian Broner fight anytime soon. If Broner were to fight Floyd Mayweather, I'm guessing it would have to be at 154. And understand, even though Mayweather is in his mid-30s, May Mayweather would be the more physically fit, more mobile guy in the ring. If you're looking for an edge on fights, don't wait until the fight's are announced or until the weigh-in to figure out the lay of the land. If you see a fighter like an Adrian Broner who already is a mobile and he is big between fights, he's pulling a Ricky Hatton routine, he's not going to be that mobile in his next fight. Right? A stick and mover would have an opportunity. Right? Terrence Crawford right now would destroy Adrian Broner in my opinion because of course Crawford is ambidextrous, he'd be able to come in, right, not with the left jab, but with the right jab to keep Broner off balance, right, and quite frankly, he'd be able to move for 12 rounds much better than Broner, who would have to lose 20 pounds just to make weight for the fight. Let's talk about tonight's fights. Let's talk about Keith Thurman versus Leonard Bundu. Now, there's a big difference between these two guys. Now, first, let me say this. I'm a bit startled by the Vegas Lions, right? The Vegas Lions have Keith Thurman an overwhelming favorite, a 10 to 1 favorite. I think that's crazy. Anyone who saw Leonard Bundu against Frankie Gavin understands that Leonard Bundu is a serious opponent, right? While I think Thurman wins this fight, 
I believe these odds are completely unbalanced. Now let's talk about why I think Thurman wins this fight. Leonard Mundu is an arm puncher. Right, he throws volume, but he doesn't have his weight behind the punches. Keith Thurman, by contrast, is an all-body puncher. Keith Thurman leans into his shots. He's the much harder puncher in this matchup. Let me say this, too. Because Leonard Bundu is a little bit shorter, right, he's something like five, six and a half. He's developed some bad habits, right? He doesn't really bend to make himself smaller. He hasn't had to because he's not the tallest man in the ring many times, right? So he's standing straight up. In my opinion, Keith Thurman has a clear opportunity here to go to Bundu's body, right? It's a clear opportunity. Now, Thurman fascinates me. In my opinion, he looked bad against Julio Diaz. He got the stoppage, right? Diaz couldn't answer the bell. Diaz had something like a broken rib. But understand, up close, Diaz was outboxing Keith Thurman, right? But I have to say, for a guy who hits as hard as Thurman, he's surprisingly adept on his back foot. I would encourage everyone to look at the John Zavik fight, right? He's surprisingly adept. Now, Bundu smothered Frankie Gavin. Understand, I consider Frankie Gavin to be more technically advanced than Keith Thurman. But boxing's rock, paper, scissors. Gavin doesn't have Thurman's punch. Sometimes you can know more in the ring, know more about angles and stuff like that, and not be the superior fighter because this is an athletic contest, and sometimes guys with more athleticism than you or more you know, athletic skills in terms of punching power, right, will offset your technical brilliance. So I consider Frankie Gavin to be the more technically advanced fighter than Keith Thurman. But I'm expecting Bundu to have all kinds of problems with Keith Thurman because Keith Thurman, even on his back foot, can lean forward and throw bombs. Right? I think Keith Thurman chops down Leonard Bundu. I think Bundu, who's older, who's physically smaller, I think Bundu is going to have a problem with the power, and I don't believe Bundu's that good on his back foot. He wasn't forced on his back foot by Frankie Gavin. Here, he could well be forced on his back foot. I, I'm personally expecting Keith Thurman to win that fight. Let's talk about Diego Chavez versus Timothy Bradley. I consider Chavez to be hopelessly limited. Right? He's a big puncher. That's it, folks. Right? To be the big puncher, he's all in. He's kind of like Keith Thurman. But he doesn't have the boxing skills besides the punching power. Right? So, if Timothy Bradley simply moves in this fight, sticks and moves. He should be able to win this fight by a wide margin. The problem, though, is the fact that Timothy Bradley mentally is really more of a fighter than a boxer. He gets thrown out of his game plan. He's fighting Rushlin Povotnikov. He starts trading with Rushlin Povotnikov. He's fighting Manny Pacquiao in the rematch after knowing that he had success outboxing Manny Pacquiao in their first match. And what does he do? I understand he got injured. But he starts swinging for the fences. Right now, understand, I consider Timothy Bradley to be one of the best fighters in the sport. But I do have concerns about his tendency to ignore his corner, throw caution to the wind, and then start chucking bombs. When he stays disciplined like he did against Juan Manuel Marquez, he's able to literally take apart guys by several rounds on the scorecards. I'm also a bit concerned by his injuries, right? Two sprained ankles in the first Pacquiao fight, calf injury in the second Pacquiao fight, 
you know, the sad truth in life is you can be an athlete in your 20s, and as you get to your 30s, things start to fall apart. Timothy Bradley is known to be a guy who trains very hard. Right? I get the feeling he's going to have to listen to his body a little bit more and take a little more time off, pace himself better in the future. I'm expecting Timothy Bradley to beat Diego Chavez. I'll say this, though. I would hedge the play with Chavez by KO simply because Bradley has been caught and has been down in fights. Not just the Richland Provotnikov fight, but if you look at the Kendall Holt knockdown from years ago, I personally am still surprised that Bradley was able to get back off the canvas, right? So Bradley is a guy who does get hit with big punches because he takes risks, right? So you need to hedge Bradley to win the fight with Chavez by KO, right? I'm not sure if that bet is even possible the odds I'm seeing at the casino are Bradley minus 800 Diego Chavez plus 500 right let me say this too you know it takes a lot for me to say that a fighter is not mentally tough I don't consider Diego Chavez to be mentally tough I think this is a guy who loses his temper in the ring and then decides to get dirty Right? If you go back and if you look at the Brandon Rios fight, it's shocking what Chavez was trying to do. Right, I thought Chavez was literally trying to physically hurt Brandon Rios in the ring in an illegal manner. I'm not talking about by knocking him out within the course of a boxing match. Right, That's, that's legitimate. That's the brutality of this sport. I'm talking about by lacing and throwing him down on the floor and stuff like that. We're just lucky. Brandon Rios did not get seriously injured on an illegal move. Right? So understand, while I don't believe Timothy Bradley can knock out Diego Chavez, I could easily see Diego Chavez getting disqualified in this match or doing something stupid in this match to have it deemed a KO. Understand, weak-minded guys. Think Andrew Galata. You remember Andrew Galata, Riddick Bowe? Andrew Galata somehow could not find a way to go through a boxing match without throwing multiple low blows. Right? You know, guys like that, right, tend to repeat their stupidity. Right? You know... The person most likely to rob the next bank is the person who robbed the last bank. That's just the way it is in life. You know what I'm saying? And it's like the kind of things that Diego Chavez does in the ring are the kind of things I would say 99% of the fighters in the sport wouldn't even think of doing. Right? The Brandon Rios fight is noteworthy because Chavez does a series of stupid acts as that fight goes along. And keep in mind, the fight was actually somewhat competitive. If Chavez thought he had the ability to beat Brandon Rios legitimately, he could have said, hey, if I sweep these last few rounds, if I land some big shots, I might be able to take this on the scorecard. That's not who he is. So pay attention to the fouls in this one because Bradley almost certainly is going to, you know, at different times come inside and try to work his inside game. That's going to give a fighter like Diego Chavez the opportunity to do the kind of dumb things. That's the word I'm using here, dumb things that he tried against Brandon Rios. Look, this is not a fan club website. If some fighter is a bit of an ass in the ring, is poorly behaved, and doesn't respect the sport, we're going to call you out here. Right? Diego Chavez, quite frankly, in my opinion, is an embarrassment to the sport. Right? Now, all that said, if I thought he was the better fighter in this one, I'd take him. Because for me, it's all about the green. Lord knows life has several embarrassments out there. But here, he's the inferior fighter with the inferior temperament in the ring. I like Timothy Bradley in this one. Look for the fouls, folks. 
Okay, if there's one fighter fighting on this card who you need to be concerned about, and keep in mind, these aren't even Bernard Hopkins level fouls, where Hopkins does things like the ref's over here and Hopkins is hitting you with this hand where the ref can't see it. These aren't those kind of fouls. These are the kind of fouls where I thought he tried to lace Brandon Rios. I thought he had his glove up, and I thought he tried to rub out and deface Brandon Rios, right? Frankly, I think the guy's a jackass. I hope he gets his ass kicked. I'm not picking Bradley for that reason, right? Rather, I'm picking Bradley because he moves better in the ring. Chavez is too flat-footed, won't be able to keep up, right? I am going to hedge the play, though, with Chavez by KO. Chavez is, at the end of the day... A gifted puncher. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.